Welcome to the Clear to Close podcast with our hosts, local mortgage expert Ryan Bolton and Carson Jones, owner of Team Honey with Red Rock Real Estate. Ryan and Carson have the questions and answers, tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, and expert guests to help explain all the steps needed to buy or sell real estate. And now it's time for the Clear to Close podcast. Well, well, hey, here we are again, uh, back in our wonderful studios. And today we want to talk about why real estate is a good investment. There's so much talk out there that somehow it's a bad idea to buy a house, like it's just bad to own a home. And so I really want to dive into some numbers today that talk about why real estate is still one of the best investments you can make. Yeah, and, and still is a key word there. I think a lot of people have always known that real estate's always been a great investment, but some people are starting to get the idea, oh, is it still a good investment? And so we're going to kind of explain today exactly why it is and um, and exactly what you should look for when you are making your next real estate investment. Yeah, and it's really crazy how often things will spike in one direction or another, and as soon as it kind of corrects or, or normalizes, it's a sky is falling kind of atmosphere. And we talked about it a little bit in previous shows, how much of it is sensationalized headlines to get clicks and doom and gloom, and that's what gets clicks a lot yeah. more than the good news, unless it's also dramatically good. So it's whatever gets clicks and likes, but it is a lot of conversation I'm having with people, who oh, should I wait? It's a bad time to buy. Interest rates are just so high. Right. You know, these types of things that get people scared that they can miss the opportunities in every single market. Well, that's exactly right. And I think a lot of people, of course, they can say, oh, it's a bad time to, to buy. Well, it's a very bad time to rent. And <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's kind of what we're going to start with here is talking yeah. about why, yes, it, 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 ha- housing prices, they might have they might be up since 2018. We have been seeing a little bit of a drop here recently. But uh, compared to rental rates, I mean, the rental rates, uh, as you'll see on, on our first slide here, you'll see that rental rates are are higher really than they've been in forever. Yeah, so let's go to that first slide. So this shows the last uh, 30 years since 1988, the median asking price for rent. That chart just kind of keeps going up. Look how much it's spiked over even since 2018. A lot of yeah. it has to do with interest rates. A lot of it has to do with the home prices going up. So as people buy these rental properties, the cost of rent has to go up because they're having to offset a bigger debt payment. So let's go to slide number two here. This one graphs a little bit easier, a little bit easier to see here, that talks about the median asking price for rent has tripled over the last 30 years. Yeah. So when you buy a home, you you have to calculate what that new debt servicing is gonna be if you wanna turn it into a rental. And so the pressure to move rents up is gonna far outpace the current interest rates. Because it's something where now they owe more on the house, the payment is more on the house, so that translates into a higher rent payment. And right. we've seen that in St. George. We've always seen a big separation between owning the home and renting it. And during these gaps, the owning actually is more than renting. Then rent kind of catches up. Then it gets to the point where it's over the top of it. That's what we're going to see over the next five years, my prediction, is rents will go up more than what the payments have now gone up to. Right. Because they got a cash flow on these particular properties, or they have to put so much more money down just to break even on it, to be able to keep up with the demand that housing is. And there's a shortage of homes for sale. So what is renting is going so quick and going for so much more. Well, and if we go back to slide number one real quick, just to Mm -hmm. show that one more time, uh, how many times do we see that graph dropping (laughs) in the past 30 years? Yeah, Uh, hasn't. Ask me. I mean, if you're a landlord, how often do you sit there and think maybe I should decrease my rental my rental rates? Right. It just doesn't happen. And so, so that's one thing people have to realize is that rents are going to continue to go up, even if we see a big drop in housing prices. Landlords are still going to want to get the rent that they can get. They're not. Uh, they still bought the house for the same amount that they bought the house for originally. They're going to want to be getting as much rent as they can. And, and there's always going to be a very high demand for rentals. Uh, and when you're in a growing area like southern Utah and some of these growing areas, the, they gobble up the rentals even faster than the homes themselves because maybe they're going to move in, settle down, kind of figure out where they're going to want to live. You know, they rent for six months to a year to kind of get settled into the community before they actually commit to buying something. Right. And we have so much more remote working. We have so many more people that don't have to live in L.A. or Vegas or Chicago or any of these places. They can live almost anywhere and work remotely. So they are starting to look at more of these smaller towns, more a little more rural. I mean, those are the areas that people are looking at, especially climate-wise. Yeah. If you have a choice to live in certain areas and, and, and you can live somewhere else and still get the pay that you can bring with you, that's where we're seeing those rental markets are going up across the country even faster than mortgage rates or home prices. Well, and I love the little videos on TikTok where somebody will go on the street in New York City and say, hey, how much do you pay for rent? And they'll oh, say, yeah. okay, I paid. $5,000 for rent. Let me see it. And they go show them their $5,000 apartment and 
you're blown away by how little that actually gets you. Mm -hmm. And so there's, uh, I mean, it's been happening for quite a few years now, but you're going to continue to see people in these big cities where rent just isn't really affordable. Even if you have a very nice paying job, it's not affordable. It's actually becoming more affordable to own a house in most places in the country than it is to rent a house. Right. And so that's just, I mean, why wouldn't you, if, if, if you're going to be paying $5,000 a month in rent, $5,000 a month mortgage is a very nice home mm -hmm. in many different places in the country. In St. George, a $5,000 a month uh, mortgage is one of the nicer homes that you're going to find. And that's why you see so much growth in our areas. People are bringing that concept. Oh, I can, I've been paying 5000 for a shack somewhere, and here I can buy an entire house for that, where the locals are like, holy cow, 5000 right. a month. Or, right. So there's always going to be a little bit of that separation between the median income and median home price, especially in St. George. And so much of it does tie down to the income is coming with them. They're not having to drive drive the income from here, either retirement or remote working or something like that, where they can offset that that price for what they're getting. Uh, let's jump to slide three here. I thought this was really interesting, and I think it's going to be the trend going forward for the yeah. next few years as we absorb the higher payments, higher uh, purchase prices that investors are doing as they buy these properties. So this one shows the rent over or year over year renting. It showed that it jumped 9.3% from last August. That's one of the largest increase. You, you remember that slide yeah. number one was just showing all these increases. That's the biggest increase in 16 years. 16 years, which is, again, that's showing you that even though since last August, home prices have not increased. No, that, yeah, it's not like the home prices increased 16%. No, no. no so home prices have uh, ha have steadied and actually gone down in many areas, mm -hmm. uh, but rental rates have gone up 9.3%, still the fastest in 16 years, which is is crazy to think about because it also shows you that with inflation, uh, your groceries get get higher, right? Your groceries get higher, your uh, your gas gets higher, all this stuff gets higher. Mortgages don't get higher. Right. Your mortgage right. stays the same. Your mortgage right. stays right at the interest rate that you agree to, and you don't have to worry about oh well, inflation is going crazy, so my two thousand dollar a month mortgage is going down to twenty eight hundred. No, you're you're at the mortgage that you agreed to, whether that was a year ago or 20 years ago. You don't have to worry about that changing. Rent, though, you're kind of going to have to deal with the same as as inflation is going to go. If gas prices are going up, groceries grow, going up, everything else is going up, your rent is going to go up because now that landlord needs more money to afford what it's going to take to run that property because utilities are going to be a little bit higher. Everything's going to be going a little right. bit Repairs. higher. Repairs. I mean, every yeah. repair fee has gone up. Every cost to get a disposal fixed. I mean, all that stuff does get more so they have to make sure they're making enough to offset that. Now, some people exactly. say it's all greed, but it's like, okay, if somebody knocks on your door and can pay 2500 and you got somebody in there too and their lease is about to renew, why would you not accept the higher amount to offset some of your expenses and some right. of your costs as well? Yeah, you can't. And a lot of it's that supply and demand too. There's still more demand than there is supply, so that's why rents are, are also going to go up. For sure. I mean, unless you're renting from a family member uh, yeah. or somebody yeah. very close to you, most of the time they're going to be trying to get absolutely as much as they possibly right. can. right. And then I know they'll work with you. Maybe they don't go full up, but it's going to go up. Yeah. It, 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 does anybody think right now, if you got a lease that's going to renew here in the next 12 months, do you really think it's going to stay the same or go <laughs> down? It's just how much is it going to go up? Yeah. It's really not a question of if, it's how much. Yeah. So that's why, like you're saying, locking in your mortgage payment, even if it is maybe more than what you're paying for rent, now you're getting the appreciation, you're getting the tax benefits, and you're getting the stability. That payment won't change. Yeah. Now, maybe your tax insurance might change, but it's so much smaller. It's very incrementally smaller than any rent increase. Yeah. So it is something where I, we really want to focus today on the benefits of owning a home versus renting. So we want to jump into a couple different slides here, too, about the benefits and why real estate is a good investment. Right. So let's, uh, I think it's slide number four, Mr. Producer Guy. Yeah, slide number four starts talking a little bit about uh, really other options right now that are that are good. And then even these next few slides are also going to show us uh, um, exactly the comparisons of, of A, what people think, but also just proven facts over how much return you're going to get on your investment. So, right. so uh, let's take a look at that first slide. Let's go to slide uh, one before. Yep, perfect there. So this one shows um, that Americans, when Gallup poll did kind of, okay, what do you think is the best long-term investment? For nine years running, mortgages or real estate, that has been number one for nine years running. I remember it did jump down to like gold for like one year and it was like nine years before that. So the last 18 years has only been one time yeah. where everybody that's been polled with this poll said that real estate wasn't the best long-term investment over stocks, bonds, gold, crypto, cars, all the other things you can do. And why is that? You're always going to have a housing expense. Why not own it? 
and you get more tax benefits. You can buy the entire house with not having to have 100% of the money. So there's financing options that are out there. There's so many ways to make it part of the American dream right. that the, even the, the rules make it easier to own a home. And it helps the community. They show all these kind of stats that when you own a home, you miss less days at work. You're more committed to the community. You're not as trans, you know, you're not moving quite as much. You're usually more committed to your job because you have that commitment. And it's almost a forced savings account in the sense that you have to make that payment almost like your IRA payment or your 401, it kind of forces you into a savings plan. Right. And your net worth goes up dramatically when you own a home. Yeah. I mean, the the only real difference with, with, with different investments is real estates might come with a few more expenses at times. Uh, with, with that said, it, it's one of those things where the demand for real estate is going to be much higher than the others, right? right? The demand for real estate is going to be a lot higher than the, the demand for savings accounts and CDA or CDs out there. Uh, with, with that said, I think people also have to take a look and recognize exactly not only what's happening at the time, but what's going to happen over these next X amount of years, right? Mm -hmm. As more people are born and, and, younger generations grow up, people are going to need a place to live. They're not just going to stay in that exact same house forever. And like it or not, they don't build houses anymore to last for 150 years. Mm. They're building houses so that they start going bad. I mean, look at like your Apple iPhone or some of these other, some of these phones that you're, uh, uh, that you're using or, or products, and they're kind of designed to go bad on you after a while. And uh, number one, that's so that they can go buy another one. And number two is so builders can also rebuild something later on. And and, and you, I think you're going to start seeing that over these next 20, 30 years is that houses aren't built the same as they were a while back. And they, they aren't going to sit around and last for, for 80 to 100 years. And we're going to have to go through these these routine, uh, I mean, rebuilds, essentially, that that uh, we'll see in the country. You know, it's funny. When you talk to people right now, they're, they're worried about interest rate. They're worried about payment, worried about prices going down. But I'm amazed at how often people will say, well, I don't want to have to deal with repairs. And I often ask them, I say, okay, <clears throat> you've been in your rental for, what, a year, two years? How many things have broke? And you might have somebody had some crazy, oh, the dishwasher, the fridge, the you know, the garbage disposal, the furnace, all that kind of stuff. And it might be the age of the home as well. But most of the time, people say, well, nothing's really broke. Yeah. And like, you're waiting to buy a house because you're worried about the fridge going out. Now, there's warranties you can add to stuff too, as, as you're probably well aware. Almost every contract will have a one-year warranty when you first get into it. That's what? Now, they're about $1,000 a year. <clears throat> that will cover those major repairs, which yeah. I think is well worth it. But I'm amazed at how many people sit there and pay 110% interest on their their rental, you know, because of the fact that it's all interest, no appreciation, no tax benefits. And they're worried about that garbage disposal going out. Yeah. Or they're worried about the furnace or something like that. I'm amazed at now and that's not like trying to make it not legitimate. That's definitely a concern. If it's that big of a concern, get the warranty. Yeah. You know, or get it fixed when you buy the house. You know, get it fixed right off the bat. But I'm amazed how many people will wait on that because they're just so worried about something breaking that it's like, but the benefits so far outweigh the disadvantage. The fridge might go out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do so you have the people say that to say, I don't want to buy because I'm worried about something breaking and I have to pay for something breaking. You're still going to have to pay for it even more in the rental. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in the rental, one of those things they look at a lot of times are going to take that out, out of your security deposit. If something goes bad, mm -hmm. they'll, there's there's ways they're going to find, oh, this is, this is the renter's fault that, that something like this wasn't taken care of. So, um, yeah, I mean, things go out, but you would much rather invest and in, and. In, and uh, and and buy that expensive thing that that got broken in your house on something that you actually own, rather than fixing it for somebody else. Right, right. So. And, and I have a saying I use all the time that says that uh, when you're renting, you do have a mortgage. Yeah. It's just somebody else's. Yeah. So why not own it? Why not stabilize that payment? And maybe your buying power is less than it was. Sure. Maybe it's not going to shoot up in value as much as it was. Sure. But it's still going to go up. It's still something long term. It's a long term play. Uh, homeowners win in the long run. They really do. Is it as short term as crypto? I mean, the market got to the, we're such a microwave society that we have to get the returns so quick and quick. It doesn't really matter until you sell it. If your payment is X amount and you're comfortable with that for the next 10 years, regardless of what the value of the home goes, that's really where you need to focus on. And there's so many benefits of owning a home that just aren't even the financial ones. Right. Um, owning pets, customization, having the chance to have your own garage, your own yard. I mean, there's so many things about owning a home yeah. that just outweigh. Now, there's a time and place for renting. Don't get me wrong. But the sooner you can do it and not be as scared of what the news is trying to tell you, don't let the news tell you when to buy a house. Look at your budget, work with your team, and find out when the best time is. So let's take a look at, I think it's slide number five. It's the long-term, the best long-term investment one. Yep, there it is. There's our graph up on the screen here. 
So it shows, again, on the Gallup poll, it breaks down who thought that the best investment was uh, real estate. <clears throat> and you can see it's 34%. The net close is 26% at gold, stocks and bonds at 18, CDs and savings, 13, bonds are at 7. I don't know who's putting bonds on there. I mean... That's like grandma that buying a little a peeper. Yeah, it's still a thing. Yeah, <laughs> but even 7%. CDs have kind of gone down over the past. I mean, they're definitely seems. one of the safer. If there's anything yeah. of safe investments, those are definitely the ones. But the returns yeah. on that thing barely keep up with inflation and yeah. haven't in the last five years alone because of just it, the rates on them. It's in so this bad. digital age, I mean, so many people are so obsessed with the crypto and the, mm -hmm. and the stocks that – uh, they, they they do start to forget about some of the, the more old-fashioned ways. You talk about how much money has been created, how much money has been destroyed by yeah. crypto because of all the things of just that money just vaporized. And let's go to the last slide here. This is, I thought, was really, uh, really good here. This is number six, I believe. Yep, right here. Take a look at this one. Your home is your piggy bank. Over the last year, homeowners gained an average of $56,700 in equity. That's a combination of paying their payment down and just the equity appreciation, even at the slower equity rates. Everyone's like, oh, you're only getting 2%. Well, 2% of 400000 is a lot more than 2% on your $4 stock. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Or your $10 stock. So that's a pretty significant number. How much has your net worth gone up in the last year if you're renting? Yeah. It hasn't. If anything, it's gone down because you're not taking advantage of the tax benefits and some of the other things that come with home ownership that you can't get with any other investment vehicle. Yeah. All your expenses are going to somebody else. And, and, and when you own a home, you, yes, you still have an expense that you have to pay towards your house every month, but it's going towards your own investment already. Mm -hmm. You're not paying in towards somebody else's investment. Right. Right. So, so let's take a look at the last couple of slides. Number six, I think, is a good one here. So we'll jump up to this. Oh, that was six. All right, we're going to seven. So take a look at this one. This is a really good quote from Freddie Mac. So Freddie Mac is not um, not some guy that's a good rapper. You know, I had said, so what's Freddie Mac? You know, he's, <laughs> is, is, he, is he a DJ? No. So Freddie Mac is an acronym or a name that it's is our the, producer. <laughs> it's our producer. We're going to call our producer Freddie. Freddie Mac. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, again, it talks about, uh, Freddie Mac has a quote that says, homeownership not only builds a sense of pride and accomplishment, but it's an important step forward towards achieving long-term financial stability. There's something to be said about that. We've been talking about rents, how they go up, how they're unpredictable. I know every time that a lease is getting ready to renew, people are crossing their fingers that it doesn't go up, especially over the last few years. Yeah, They think, oh, I already had my rent at 2000 a month, whatever it is. Who really thinks, who's listening to this that thinks my rent's going down or even staying the same? So look at some of the things you're missing out on because you're scared that rates are at this high, 20-year highs or whatever they are. When if you look at the last 52 years, 7.7% is the average for a mortgage loan. Yeah. So when we got these 3 and 4% that we're giving it away, we're getting back to what is normal. Well, but there's still far more benefits, not only financial, but stability that comes from owning a home. It is. And and, and as a real estate agent, a lot of what we do is we we call people. We, we, we're on the phone most of the day. We're talking to people. And, and so we hear a lot of objections as to why they don't want to buy a home. And of course, right now, the biggest one is interest rates are too high. And and, and really, there, it's a quick rebuttal to that, but it's also something that everybody needs to consider. And, and the, fact that the, the fact of the matter on this is that if interest rates are 7-ish percent right now, between 7 and 8, with that doesn't just mean all of a sudden we're going to drop back down to three anytime soon, right? And so, okay, we drop. Let's say a whole bunch of great stuff happens and we do get back down into the mid fives, low fives, which is about as low as people are anybody's really projecting. Right, uh, right. Best case scenario here. If that happens, great. You could still buy your house now and, and refinance if that happens. And and the if is the big thing. If that doesn't happen, congratulations. Now you have a lower interest rate than what it's going to be over the next few years as it goes up now into the eights and nines. You can't just assume that it's going to be going down. And if people are just, uh, they have this thought of, I'm just waiting for interest rates to go down. What do you wait? I mean, you're not going to get much of a break it, uh, if it happens. And if it doesn't happen, now all of a sudden your house is worth more. But here's the other side to that. Let's say they do drop down to five. What happens to the price of the homes? As mm. soon as they drop down, we've even seen that when we've just been seeing little half percent drops so far. Uh, we saw a big drop from kind of, the high sevens, even over the past few weeks, kind of went back down into more low sevens. And just that alone increased the demand significantly, right, just right. a small drop. So if we were to drop a full two plus points, the the price of the homes is going to skyrocket all of a sudden. So congratulations. Now you just got that exact same home that you paid, uh, that you could have paid, say, $700,000 for uh, at a 7% interest rate. Okay. Now you just got that same exact home for eight fifty dollars at a 5% interest rate. But 
you could have actually just still got it at 700 and still get your 5% interest right. rate when you refinance. Right. So so get it now, refinance if it goes down, if it doesn't, great. At least you don't have that higher that higher interest rate. You still got the price at a lower price, which right now we're in a little bit lower market. You can get some better deals out there, uh, especially compared to where we were a few years ago. Oh, that's that's such a good point. It's like you never can time one or the other. Either rates are going to get better, but home prices go up, or rates are going to be worse and home prices are going to be different. So it really is tough. There's a saying that's in real estate that I think is one of the best sayings that I've ever heard. The best time to buy a home was six months ago. The second best time is now because there's going to be more benefits long term than there is on the short term because either the appreciation is going to go up. So in your same scenario, maybe rates do drop. A 2% drop is crazy rare. Yeah. Like going from what we did in the time frame we did, if you look at the last 70 years of mortgage rates, we've never seen them go up that quick. But they're always faster going up than down. If it does go, especially when you look at mortgage companies right now, they're they're making less on everything that they're doing. Yeah. If rates do drop that much, do you think they're going to drop them as quickly? Of course not. Yeah. They're going to level that. They're going to step it down as much as they can. Now, obviously, there's competition out there. They don't want anybody to start beating them. So they're we're always watching what's happening with rates and yield curves and risk management, all those types of things. So it is a matter of, you know, they're so well, they they have to change the rate. The Fed's got to do something. They can't keep raising the interest rate. A lot of it's more supply and demand. It's the market that's affecting yeah. this way more than any one individual person that's swinging the hammer. But it is something where you're, in your scenario is perfect. If rates are a little bit higher now, but the prices are where they are, if the price goes up, you gain that appreciation and you gain the rate if it happens to come back down. So you're getting best of both worlds. So now you have a loan where you can lower the interest rate, maybe get rid of the mortgage insurance way right. faster because now you gain that appreciation instead of waiting for the price to go up for rates to come down. So I always sit down with my clients and say, what's your budget? Let's go find a house that fits that budget, that fits your needs. Then as the situation changes over the years of owning the home, maybe something will pop up where it makes sense to refinance, sell, turn that into a rental, build up a portfolio of other rental properties, whatever you need to do yeah. there. And a lot of times that's the best way to build an investment portfolio is buy it as a primary, live in it for a while to let the rents kind of catch up or rates to come down, and then turn that into a rental. That's how you see people are able to rent under market value is having that equity or that payment built in from now, and they rent it two or three years from now. Sure. That's one of the better ways to build an investment portfolio instead of having to put so much money down just to get the payment to break even. Yeah. And as there is that separation between the rents catching up, why it's going up so quick, and rate and payment, you can be in that curve owning the home while the curve's going up. Yeah. Buy real estate. It's one of the best investments out there. It, it is. And I mean, uh, another just point with this, and I think we've actually talked about this a little bit in the past as well, is exactly what is going to become popular here in terms of real estate over the next few years. Mm -hmm. During COVID, we saw the nightly rental uh, purchase market just skyrocket. Yeah, VRBO, Airbnb yep. type stuff. Yeah, there, yep. there, there were times we had literally 11 to 12 homes on the entire MLS that you could actually legally do a nightly rental on. And the prices of those were out of this world. They made zero oh, sense. Wow, yeah. <laughs> now we're starting to see a lot of those people are realizing we paid way too much for this place and they're selling. Now we've got well over 100, 150 uh, places on the market that you could buy and legally do a nightly rental on, even though we're in a, a, a city who really is very restrictive on what you can and can't rent out nightly. So so yeah, you've seen a big pushback on VBR, VRBOs. They didn't time. allow any of them. Now they kind of let way too many of them. Now they're starting to kind of dial them back a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But it is amazing watching the dollar per square foot. If it had that designation, you could nightly rental it. Holy. It, it, didn't, it wasn't like all of a sudden they were built better, more quality, no. better stuff. It was just like, oh, we got that designation. Boom. It just shot up. And you'd have everybody wanted those. Yeah. Five and six people would buy it together as a family, almost like timeshare, like on a houseboat or yeah. something like that. And you are starting to see, whoa, wait a minute, there is downtimes yep. with rental market. Every every area is going to have a season where they rent a little bit better. And maybe it's more of a winter destination, summer destination. Or like St. George, obviously, we get very hot. Phoenix, it's very hot. Vegas, it really cool cools off in, in the sense of what right. people are renting for during those times. Yeah. So those are the months you're just kind of trying to survive for the better months. But when you're debt servicing a much higher payment on those, it just makes it harder for that to be an investment. But boy, those were popping. Like that was a real estate thing. But again, it's that short-term mentality that we seem to have in real estate when really it's always been a long-term play. And it it's is. always worth it long. Even those VRBOs will turn out. They just got to keep them a little bit longer. Well, in long-term, think about your family as well. That's why I, I've always thought, I mean, homes with a casita or a mother-in-law apartment, I think over these next 10 years is going to become more and more popular, A, to be built. Boy, those are getting really popular. It yeah. is. And when they, when they do hit the market, they sell pretty quick because – as we just talked about, rental rates are so high that a lot of people are having their family members move in with them yeah. for either free or cheap so that, okay, yeah, you can have your own space. We don't want to live 
right next to you in the house, but at least you've got your own spot at the place and uh, it, it, we can all kind of do it together as a family rather than going and paying somebody else this huge rent. Yeah, that's that's why there's so many more benefits to owning a home than renting when you can. Yeah. And that's what we want to help you with. So if you're looking to buy or purchase in Nevada and Utah, that's where we focus. We do have opportunities to be able to help you in other areas. So if you have any questions about the real estate market, we can help you with that. But that's kind of the areas we focus on. And it's something we'd love to earn your business. You can check out our websites. We'll post those in the descriptions. But if you have any comments, questions, concerns uh, for our next topics, we'd love to talk with you. But Carson, this was great. Hey, thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time on the Clear Coast Podcast. This has been the Clear to Close podcast with Ryan Bolton and Carson Jones. Please submit your comments, questions, and topics for future episodes to clear to close pod at gmail.com. That's clear the number two, close pod at gmail.com. Or find my home utah.com or ryanbolton.com. Please like, follow, and share. And until next time, this is the Clear to Close podcast. Views expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Patriot Home Mortgage or Team Honey with Red Rock Real Estate. License number NMLS 299717. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.